Occasionally, when I was doing the illustration, I'd get a really gigantic project that paid really, really well. And I remember one of them was this coffee poster for a coffee company. And they, I was so excited about it because it paid like 10 times more than I would normally get for these little illustrations I was always making. But they asked me to, to do these two people that were in love and the, they told me the view and they have to be holding the cup a certain way. And, and it was just so awful and, and really, really difficult to do. And I mean, I think I cried and I think I hit the picture and it was so dorky and so dumb. And, you know, but I got all this money for it, but it was, it, it just, it, and I ended up making something that I, I was considering showing you guys, and I, do, I can't even show you on this. I don't even want to look at it. It's so embarrassing. So that kind of work never really helped me. It did financially, but it kind of killed my spirit. And then on the other hand, there were projects that would come along, and there was no money. It was just uh, a couple hundred bucks, you know, and, and, uh, and they felt so horrible that it was so low that they would never kind of tell you what to do. They'd say, listen, you know, just do what you want, have fun, sorry, this is all we have. And I remember there was one project, a book cover, and, uh, and, and they had already paid an illustrator a little bit of money to do it, and he messed it up. So the publisher was coming to me to ask for a favor, like, just help me out. Like, it was literally like 100 bucks or something, you know, it's to save us. We only have a few days left. and. Um, and I read the book and I really liked it. I kind of reviewed the text and I knew that even though there was no money, I would have fun and I would enjoy this and I could do something that I wanted to make. And those kind of projects, interestingly, over the arc of a 10 or 20 year career, were the ones that gave, gave me a foothold. That, that I would talk about that work. People would share that work. It was better work. Anyway, this is Nicholas Wilton at Art to Life, and I'm talking about making work, the power of, of making work first for yourself. That's a commercial challenge, right? When people ask you to do certain things and you, you, know, you compromise and all the rest, and it just never really comes out that great. That little book, that, was, that little book cover that I did was the Four Agreements uh, book cover that became wildly popular and ended up um, pushing my career and trajectory and gave me a tremendous amount of confidence to, to this idea that the more things I could do that I was pleasing myself, the better the work. It might not, it might not translate so well in your pocketbook at first, but later it probably will. And so I share this with you because I know, I mean, fine art is, has commercial, uh, you know, um, there's a commercial, uh, aspect to it. Um, think of a commission we do, right? Like I get these commissions and, you know, depending on the person, and then oftentimes they're kind of telling you what they want. They've seen something you've done in the past, even though you did that just completely on your own, but now you got to repeat yourself. I don't know about you, but there's, there's some challenges around this. And often, I mean, rarely actually, the thing that they're, the commission never really turns out as solid or as exciting as the thing they saw in the first place. Um, I always feel that way. It's never like, oh, the commission is even better, right? Because it's being derived from something. Even though it's me, I'm no longer back there. I'm making this work up here. So that's the idea. And I just wanted to underline that and share it with you that, that it, sometimes it doesn't feel important or we make these compromises. But, uh, you know, the sooner and, and the more frequently we can make work first for ourselves and then for all the other critics and all the other people and all the other things, um, it turns out stronger and actually rises to the surface of what's out there and, and brings, you know, kind of a whole momentum to our career. And it makes work that's really, really personal because if you're at the helm, the work is going to be unique like you. Let me know in the comments uh, how you navigate this, how you hold on to this um, creative freedom. How do you keep your art practice yours? I'd love to know, because this is a challenge for all of us.
This week's podcast is a little bit related to this. I'm interviewing this amazing surface designer. And although she's in this commercial world, um, her work is next level and all this cool stuff, they're beautiful things. She applies it to patterns and on different surfaces. And she's figured this out. She's got a pretty cool way of approaching this problem. And uh, her whole life and her whole art are super integrated into who she is. And I think you will be inspired to listen to that. So there's a link down below. Uh, go ahead and click on that if you want to subscribe to the Art to Life podcast. Um, I'd super appreciate it. Um, we also have an amazing Facebook group, the Free Artist Facebook group. There's tons of artists in there doing extraordinary things. Everyone's invited. Um, you can click on the link there and um, join us in there as well. I hope your Sunday's going super good. Thanks for being here. Okay. Hey everyone, if you found this helpful, I have a whole lot more to teach, share, and inspire you with every single week. So please join the Art to Life YouTube channel by clicking the subscribe button below. Okay, great. Let's do this.